Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, September 6th. We're going to review all the trade alerts, all the positions for the week. Obviously, a shortened week. Monday was closed with uh, Labor Day. And so we just had uh, less trades, a little bit less time to trade. Before we jump into the alerts, let's take a look at who got caught being hot. Uh, I'm actually kind of embarrassed here. Uh, Todd Shiflett. It's been a, a long time member. Does he contributes to the community quite a bit? And for whatever reason, I thought he had already won the hot award. So my bad, Todd. If you're listening, or when you do listen to this, I apologize. And we do we value all your contributions to the community. So keep up the good work, and congrats, you got caught being hot. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week. Uh, like I said, Monday was closed, so Tuesday the third was the first alert. And that was a closing trade that we did in one of our weekly uh, iron condors. And uh, we're in this trade for eight days. We put this on with eight days to expiration, booked over $1,000. Actually, it's a little over $1,300 is what it ended up being. Uh, got got out of that trade. If we take a look at uh, SPX, uh, that was right here on this day here. So it was kind of hanging out near the break even uh, when we went into the end of the weekend and then made a nice move lower gave us the chance to book that. Now, of course, the market has just taken off to the upside since then, uh, but we were able to get out with a nice profit on that trade. Uh, if we take a look at um, the, the next alert, uh, we did a rolling adjusting trade in forward slash ZB. And so we basically just rolled one set of our short, short strangles from uh, October, which was down to 17 days to expiration, rolled it out to November with 52 days. And we adjusted our puts up from 162 up to 164. And then we call, kept those calls at 151. So um, close this here. So the uh, let me go back to the platform here and look at ZB. Here's ZB here. Uh, obviously, we're starting to get a little bit of relief from that huge, massive uphill climb that we've been seeing, which is which has been nice. And so if we take a look at the analyze tab, we've got these two different pieces here. Uh, this is the one that we uh, that we had on before. It's the 163 put 165 call. You can see price is dead centered here. We've gotten about 850 bucks or so back since we've since we did that roll. And then the one that I just mentioned here was this one. And we've got some some profit back on that since since the uh, since the roll as well. So. We could still use some lower prices for sure uh, to eat back at the loss that we're currently in in ZB. But uh, you know, I think if you know if prices just kind of stay around here or, or go down a little bit, we we can get this back within a couple of cycles. But that is the plan: just staying mechanical, and um, and that's what we're going to do. All right, Todd, glad you're here. Looking forward to the swag. Nice. All right, sport it everywhere you go. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's go back to the alerts here. So next trade was rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So this is one that was down to 22 days to expiration. So we went ahead and rolled that out to November with 55, kept the strikes exactly the same. And then we're still holding our other piece uh, in October as well. So let's go to the platform here and check out Natty Gas. And man, look at Nat Gas. I mean, it's just been on a crazy run, which is good for us because we needed an up move in Nat Gas to uh, to get back into a, a good position there. So these are both of them. Remember, um, uh, the three put we're sharing that for both because it, it's pretty far in the money. So as far as the liquidity goes, we wanted to stay on that three put, and then we've got the two point three and the two point three five call. So they're essentially the same, just one strike off on the call side. You can see prices right here getting back to center. And so just going to play the waiting game, wait for some more time to decay and uh, and try to get back to profits in Natty Gas. Uh, let's see. Next trade was. Next trade was a closing trade in four slash six B. So we had a short strangle on in the British pound booked over 35 percent of max profit in under two weeks on that trade. So got a quick contraction in applied volatility when they announced that they were going to suspend the whole Brexit vote. And so got a nice got a nice pop. Excuse me, not not a nice pop, but a nice contraction in applied volatility. So we were able to get out of that one. 
And then the next trade was the was the other roll in that gas. So did that did the first one with 22 days left to expiration did this one with 21 days and i just showed you those so coming back to center nicely on that gas next trade was a closing adjusting trade in iyr so we closed out that put vertical side of our iron condor price breached our upper break even there's very little value left in that put vertical side so we went ahead and closed that out now we're still holding the call vertical side from that one in september and then we've also got another full iron condor in october so here's the short call vertical that we're still holding in september uh, so we need a little bit of downside action to get back into range there we've got 14 days so we'll, we'll, you know on these defined risk trades we'll hold them all the way down to uh to, to expiration week if needed uh, so we've got a little bit of time there and then the one out in october has 42 days left and it's fairly well centered within range uh, so you can see price right there. We've got some profit waiting for some more before we take that off in IYR. <clears throat> Next trade was a closing trade in VXX. I felt like we were in this trade forever. We were, we were in it for over a month and actually we're down on the trade for about a month. Right when, right when we got in, it went against us and we just kind of stayed taking some heat right off the bat. If we take a look here at VXX, um, I want to just show you the chart. So if we go to the chart here, we put this on when implied volatility spiked, price spiked up, and uh, we put it on this day right here, I believe, 8.2. And immediately after that, you know, the, that's when the market was going down, spiked up, and it just kind of stayed above that range and finally got this contraction as the market's been ripping higher. So that allowed us to book a profit in VXX, booked over 35% of max profit on that trade. Then next trade, we did a, an opening trade in SPX. So another weekly trade and we, uh, we put on a double calendar and on the, we did that with eight days in the front week, 22 days in the back week. And, and so let's take a look at SPX. If we take a look at that here, it's still, still fairly centered, although with market up and implied volatility contracting you can see we're down a little bit down about 60 bucks but still well within range so just holding this uh to uh hopefully price kind of ping pongs around stays in this range and we're able to book a profit there the uh the next trade uh on the list was another spx uh, weekly trade where we ended up closing that one and unfortunately we took a loss on that one as uh as price just ripped higher yesterday so uh, i was waiting for Hoping, hoping and waiting for price to potentially come down a little bit further, but never did. So we ended up taking that off, booking a loss. That was the last day of trading. So we really needed to get out um, or maybe it had one more day, but we didn't want to, we didn't want to risk going into further loss. So we went ahead and just took that off and, uh, and booked a loss on that one. So remember on those weekly income trades, you're going to, you know, the, the probabilities are a little bit lower you know, so you're going to take some losses. So you just got to be able to do that. You can't, you can't win all those. It's not a super high probability play uh, like some of the other trades that we do. Uh, next trade was, so there's the XP, SPX one that I just mentioned. And then lastly, the one today, the one trade alert we took today is we added another trade in KRE and we put on a short strangle with 42 days to expiration. Uh, implied volatility staying decent in KRE. So we went ahead and sold some premium still above 60. And um, so this is pretty close to where we put it on. Already got a little bit, a tiny bit of profit since we did that earlier this morning, uh, but still still center, just waiting for some more time to K. So those are all the alerts, kind of a light week as far as the number of alerts go, but again, short week. And then just the way the market's moving, uh, just, that's just kind of the, the cards that we were dealt. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with oil, man, oil has been crazy, just up and down, big moves up, big moves down. And, uh, but all to come back pretty close to center. We're up uh, about 400 bucks here and, uh, just waiting for some more time to pass in oil. In ES, we've got this long put vertical prices moved up out of range. So we need some downside movement to get back into range there. In gold, gold moving lower today. Uh, if we take a look here, we've got two different pieces here. We've got this uh, short call vertical spread that's just outside of range, looking for some more downside movement to get back in. That one's got 19 days left to expiration. So we've got some time. Hopefully the, the uh, decline in gold continues and that would help that piece for sure. 
And then in the next cycle, which has 52 days to expiration, we've got a full iron condor. And so that's what this looks like here. You can see pr prices hanging out right here. Uh, so just need some more time to pass in gold for that one. Natty gas already mentioned that bonds already mentioned wheat. We've got an iron condor prices hanging out right here in wheat. Just waiting for some more time to pass there. Uh, with this big move, some of our short delta positions are really getting hurt right now. Uh, this is Apple, uh, long put vertical. You can see prices at a range, so we need some downside to get back in there. That's in September with 14 days. So we'll look to close or roll that here uh, as we as we get closer and closer to expiration week. Uh, John Deere, this is one that I actually had an order in to roll when we were uh, we were close to 50% of max profit, but never got filled and prices moved up since then. We're still in range. Uh, so just holding on to our John Deere for now. DIA, we've got those two sets of short call verticals that prices moved out of range here. So just looking for some downside to get back in on that. EEM, we had a long put or we have a long put and price just ripped higher there. I mean, look at this. Look at the move in EEM. I mean, it just really shot up uh, with the with the calming down, I guess you could say, of the tariff talk uh, that helps the emerging markets. And so that's what you're seeing there. Big, big, big rip higher in EEM. Um, and that one's got, we've got 14 days. So again, we'll, we'll address this as we get closer to expiration uh, on that trade. EWZ, we've got a short strangle on an EWZ. Price is hanging out here. Just breached the, the short strike. But if you look at the value left in that put, we've still got a decent amount here. So we're going to let that one go a little bit longer. And that's out in October. Still has 42 days to expiration. So not looking to uh, roll up the puts on that one yet. And then the other thing is we're not, we're not going to add to this one by adding a new centered strangle around the current price just because with the contraction and implied volatility, IV percentile now at nine, IV rank at 11. Uh, we don't want to add to that yet. Goldman Sachs, we've got a short delta play on here. And with the big up move, prices moved at, just at a range on that one. I mentioned IYR. I mentioned KRE. QQQ, pretty similar to the DIA. Got these two sets of short call verticals with the up move, prices moved out. Uh, looking to do some rolling or closing next week on at least one of those. SMH, we've got this adjusted strangle here. Price is now hanging out kind of in the upper end of the range. I'd like to add back onto this. Remember, we did have two pieces on in SMH. Uh, we closed one out because we it was pretty well centered, uh, booked a nice profit on that piece. And then now price has moved higher. I, I do want to look to potentially add on to this one as well. Uh, but again, with implied volatility contracting, um, looking for maybe a little bit of a pop before I before I add on to that. I mentioned SPX, SPY. We've got uh, two pieces here. We've got a short call vertical here that we need to get back down into range. And then the other piece is a full iron condor. And you can see we got a little bit of profit here, just waiting for, for some more time to pass on that piece. XLF, another short biased position. We've got this long put vertical. Need some downside movement to get back into range there. Again, just kind of with the rest of this market, this thing's really ripped higher. And then lastly, very similar position in XLK, which is a technology ETF. Uh, price moved out of range and just holding that to see if we can get back in before doing anything on that one. So we'll, some of these short delta plays that are out of range, we'll either roll or close the, some of those next week, and then we'll address some of the other ones the following week. And so we want to just spread out that that spread out those rolls as price moves around, spread out the time frame, all that good stuff. So. That is the plan. Those are all the trades. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week for a full week of trading.